it's another lovely day here in the marina so we've um, decided to do some outdoor jobs Alan at the moment has got what we call wet and forget you can use it on the patios at home but we use it on our teak decks to keep them looking good I suppose all over the summer uh, so you mix it with water and pop it in the bucket and then you can get a soft brush and we just gently go around the whole deck just brushing it into the teak we just leave it to dry in the sunny weather you want to put it on a day when it's not going to rain and then leave it to do its work and it keeps all the green algae at bay and keeps the decks looking nice so seagulls getting some love and attention today here we've lost some rivets in the bar that holds the sail bag to the boom so Alan's removing what was left of the old rivet by drilling them out and then he's going to pop some new ones in and here's one that's a finished article looking very shiny and new we've replaced four so hopefully this will hold it in place for the rest of the season well this is a funny one Alan is leaning over the edge trying to test the temperature of the seawater with the meat thermometer which is quite funny because we need to calibrate some instruments and it tells us that the water outside is 36 degrees C. What is the water temperature? It is 15. 15 degrees C! Well that's a bit out. <laughs> it's a bit chilly. It's a bit chilly in there. I've swam in that. While Alan's been doing the wet and forget, I've been working on the hull on the, the bottom side here trying to get off as many black marks and rust stains as I can. It looks a lot better than it did considering she's not been out the water. And in general, I've done a bit of polishing around the cockpit area and just cleaned the top sides up here. She's looking quite nice actually. We've had to go in because this has appeared. It's loomed over us. It's a bit, it was bright and sunny and warm and hot. And now this, we've heard distant rumbling sounds. So we think we're about to get soaked. I'm going inside. Well, this great big beastie was moored up near us. And uh, I don't know if you're like us, we had absolutely no idea what this particular vessel would do. She's huge. She came in last night, she just spent the day and she's heading off again. Um, we did find out what she was for, but uh, I wonder if you can guess. I think we might pop a little post on Instagram and see if people can guess what she is, but uh, We'll tell you next time. Well, we're hearing the hoist. That noise is the hoist pulling us out. We're actually lifted. This is one of the most nerve wracking moments for any boat owner. And we're coming out the water. It's getting chilly. It's amazing, really. We're always grateful when we're lifted and we're safe and we're left on the hard. Hopefully our jobs will go well today, working on the seacock, uh, that's our sort of, not the seacock, sorry, the sail drive seal, um, but oh, let's just hope it's a good one, it makes you nervous. That's it, we're out, we've been lifted, there's the water behind us and the ramp, and we are obviously in the sling still, here's Alan, oh, nervous owner. <laughs> Well, this is a really strange sight. This is seagulls sort of heading into land rather than water. Um, they have run out of battery on their hoist controller, so they've just popped to change it. So while we're still on board, I think, or well, I should say, I hope, that uh, Alan has gone in search of refreshments. And we haven't even had our breakfast yet, so this is turning into quite an exciting morning so let's see what Alan's doing, doing the important work. he says important work I can't believe he says that we need tea we need tea I think we also need breakfast, we do need breakfast. I'm pretty hungry <laughs> so we might get a quick bowl of cereal while we're in the slings we're on passage it's bacon <laughs> we have so much fun <laughs> well I'm grateful that's over. We're in the slings. I think they're going to leave us in the slings while we uh, just try and sort out the seal and, and wash the bottom and change the anodes. So I'm going to eat breakfast. Cheers. 
seagull in the hoist outside the workshop. Um, show you underneath. Well, I'm underneath the boat and uh, this is the prop. So the prop's a bit barnacled, not terrible. Anodes are a bit wasted, but not as much as I was thinking. This is the anode. These are the barnacles on our sort of prop. Rope cutter looks not bad at all. This is another anode. The bottom is just pretty slimy, really. It's not bad. I'm going to give it a quick scrub. This anode's only wasted a small amount as well. So that's good news. Um, my job's scrubbing today. The, uh, the sintered bronze keel cooling plate's got a lot of weed on. So I'm going to clean that as well. And uh, I'll probably have a look at the log. So the log is what um, registers our speed. And uh, we're going through the water. This is the log here. And it's got a little paddle wheel in. It sort of spins. I'll give that a little clean up. Uh, the depth sounder's there. That seems to be good, not covered up. So pretty good, really. Alan's just getting some tools ready and he's going to come down and, and start to have a look at the sail drive seal. So to get at the sail drive seal, all this has got to come off because the sail drive seal is inside here. So we've started to um, clean the prop up. The prop's pretty, it was pretty barnacly and dirty as you saw before. So we've scraped all that off and now we're just giving it a quick bit of wet and dry to get it all shiny. You can see some surfaces are looking a lot better already. Alan's drained the sail dry oil out, sail drive oil I should say, out already. And now he's just looking at trying to remove the prop. Well, the prop is off now. So the next bit's the difficult bit really, getting that seal out. Here's Alan, he's just getting down to uh, getting the seal out. He's taking a photo actually so he can remember exactly what it looks like when it goes back together. It's something we've learned to do over time. It always helps and then they're always looking back just to check a little thing that you can't quite remember. So it's a good tip really. Um, and I'm going to get on with some cleaning and going to scrub the hull down and get the weed off. So we managed to get one of the inner seals out, but this other one is proving difficult. We have no idea how we're going to put a new one in without damaging it. Well, the bottom is all scrubbed now. The, um, the seals have been done. We had a bit of trouble getting them off, as you know, but in the end we got them out and we put the new ones in. Alan's just getting ready to put the prop and everything back on and the seals in. Um, I'm going to nip to the Chandler's and get some oil to fill the sail drive and uh, yeah, we're nearly there. Happy days. Well, I have to say that was a disgusting job. I'm soaking wet under here. I've probably got anti-foul all underneath. There's a lot to be said for having a copper bottom. I think we need one. <laughs> Prop's gone back on. I've got a bit more cleaning to do around the prop. It's not completely done in these surfaces. Um, but we're just trying to sort of fix it in place now, make sure it's secure, uh, rope cutters on, um, and the anode needs to go on the end. So getting close. Okay, we're, uh, we're just making our way back in the water now. We've finished all the work we planned to do. Um, it's quite exciting to go back in, and I say exciting in a sense of terrifying, uh, but um, I'm sure it'll be fine. And uh, we'll um, we'll see if the seal's worked. Fingers crossed. We're doing that land sailing thing. That land sailing, now <laughs> with the <laughs> cups of tea whilst in a hoist. It's really weird. <laughs> well, we're now on the slip. And we're heading back into the water. Nearly in. Time to dip.
and we've splashed. Yay! We've left um, Dunstaffenage Marina. We had um, 10 days there in the end, uh, which was fine because we had no choice and it's a nice place to stay, but we're glad to be getting out. We're off to Oban now. Uh, we've got to go to Oban so that Tish can get the train to Glasgow so that she can get her second COVID jab. So uh, that's the plan. Well, we've arrived in Oban. <laughs> Bit of a relief to be out at Dunstaffenage, mainly because after a little while you just feel like you're you're waiting, you feel a bit trapped, so I'm in Oban and tomorrow I'm off to get my vaccine up, book my train ticket. Well, I've made it to Dalmuir station. I'm now going to change trains. Beautiful journey, really nice scenery on the train. I'm just hoping that when I get to this um, COVID vaccination centre, that they have enough AstraZeneca for me and I haven't wasted my time. I really want this to be done. It took me about three and a half hours to get here, but I've had my second vaccine and I'm super chuffed. Um, now I've just got to wait for my train journey home. I have gone for a walk and I've found, I think it's called Kellingrove Park, I'm just outside the park, there's this lovely little pizza van. So I'm getting myself a nice Italian sausage and chili pizza for my lunch. Yum! Mm, delicious pizza. I'm sat in the park now, enjoying the view, and hopefully I'm going to enjoy this pizza. It's a lovely park. Just sat, all surrounded by trees. Not too many people. It's quite warm today too, about 21 degrees, I believe. Happy days. So I made it to the museum. Let's see if I can get inside. Well, I'm lucky enough. So we've got into the museum. I can see lots of animals in this bit. Should be an interesting way to spend a few hours. I like the giraffe. Looks like he's looking at me. This albatross is absolutely massive. The building is totally stunning. Magnificent ceilings, huge organ there. Beautiful arch windows. Special lights. Absolutely amazing. And this is the Charles Rennie Mackintosh Ladies Tea Room. It's an amazing bits of furniture. Really cool. Love the chairs and the coat stand. These heads are just fascinating. They're all sort of hanging from the gallery in the ceiling. Lots of different expressions. Just really entertaining. I love these pieces. I've got an excellent view of the plane. I think it's a Spitfire. I know Alan would tell me straight away. But yeah, I love that view. And you can see the animal gallery I was in earlier, down here. <laughs> It's the building that fascinates me. It's so beautiful. So, so beautiful. Well, that's quite enough for museums. It's now time for tea and cake. Well, I've made it back to Oban. I don't know where Alan is. He said he was going to meet me, but he's not here. I think he might have fallen asleep. Well, it's been a seven hour round trip to get that COVID vaccine. I've come back to find the lifeboat moored in the marina and the one behind it big grey and black one that's border force so they sort of do all customs exercise and stuff um wonder why they're in and seagulls up here and here's seagull all safely tucked up i wonder if alan's inside and asleep he did say he was really tired um hope i can get inside Glad to be home. So we've decided to use the COVID jab and we're in that I might feel a bit off colour later. Alan's had a bit of a, a cough. It's not COVID, we've been tested. Um, and he's feeling a bit rough. That we're gonna hang about in Oban for another day. So I've had my hair cut and now we're going ashore to find ourselves a nice restaurant. 
hopefully some sort of seafood to enjoy. Can't wait. We were going to go here for our lunch, but when we got here, the queue is absolutely massive. It just goes on and on and on. <laughs> we're going somewhere else. OK, we've wandered down into Oban. We were going to go to the Green Shack fish bar, but the queue is about 40 people deep, so we're going to have a go at the Waterford Fish House restaurant. Let's see if they can squeeze us in. We've found ourselves a really nice restaurant. We're in the Fish House restaurant. They did have a table for us, and I'm very pleased to say we've managed to get the lunch special. Very excited. We've both ordered two courses of fish, and I've got a nice glass of wine. This is going to be a good afternoon. So the starters are here, I've got a lovely mussels and Alan's got his absolute favourite of seafood chowder. I think he can't wait to start. <laughs> but here's our main courses. I've got a sole on a mash, which looks rather lovely. What did you have, Alan? Bream. Bream. Mm. Yeah, it does look rather nice. It is nice. And we're rather enjoying. Ooh, very nice sauce. Perfect, perfect day. We sailed through here when we came into Oban. This little sound, it's where all the ferries come through. That's the island of Carrera. That's down the sound of Carrera. And then I've walked all the way along this sort of esplanade from the town over there and you can see the marina in the distance. Lovely walk, lovely sunny day. I'm really enjoying stretching my legs after that big meal. Sometimes you just need it. So I'm going to happily walk along. I think there might be a castle at the end if I get lucky. I found this sign for castle, so following up the old carriageway. Let's see if we can get there. Oh, it's nice and cool in here like that, nice breeze, bit of shade, perfect. There's the castle in the distance. And this beauty here is known as the dog stone. It's huge. I think there's a bit of a story or a tale behind the dog stone. I think it's got something to do with Fingal's cave and the giants. Let's go and find out. So legend has it that this is where Fingal tied his dog Bran, his giant dog Bran, who tried to get away from the stone and that's why it's got a curve at the bottom there where the dog's chain wore away the stone. So the giant Fingal and his giant dog Bran. Lovely views. What a great spot. Sadly when I got up to the castle it's actually closed. They say only pre booked activities, but I think it's definitely closed. Nice walk though, I'm going to enjoy the walk back too. I think I pressed it. So we're on. <laughs> what are we doing now? We're both in the sea! <laughs> <laughs> and it's gorgeous. <laughs> That's an interesting interpretation of the word gorgeous. Some would say chilly. <laughs> but here we are.